as much as you hear, and I hear this from other people, our other brethren, this is not an offensive league. This championship will still be decided by defense. Okay. I, it, there was this popular perception that, well, the Cincinnati Bengals got to the Super Bowl with a lousy offensive line. I'm not denying that because when your quarterback, including the postseason, gets sacked 70 times in 19 games, that's a problem. But they didn't win the Super Bowl. And this is my favorite trivia question of the offseason, so you guys get to participate. Mm. Who spent more time in the Bengals' backfield in the second half of Super Bowl 56? A, Joe Burrow, B, Aaron Donald, or C, Von Miller? Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. Yeah. Well, what does that tell you? <laughs> okay. So in a league where it is supposedly offensively driven, two of the last su- four Super Bowls guys – has seen a team not score a touchdown. The Rams got a field goal against the Patriots. The Chiefs got three field goals against the Bucs. You know how many times that happened in the first 52 Super Bowls? Once. Now, some of those were defensive touchdowns, special teams touchdowns. I get all that and so on. But the bottom line is you better have some sort of defense to complement your offense. Or all those points don't – I mean – Dallas slumped at the end of the year. A lot of people made a big deal out of them leading the league in scoring. But I believe they had nine defensive and special teams touchdowns. So you wonder why they were sporadic down at losing at home to Arizona late in the year, the playoff loss to San Francisco. you got to be playing complementary football. This is a league where we saw, think about this, we pretty much saw six lopsided games in the wild card round. Six of the last seven playoff games were decided by a field goal, exactly three points. And the one was decided in overtime, which was the Bills-Kansas City game, which was decided by six points. So better play some defense. As men, All those points are great. All those yards are great. All those touchdowns are great. So that's why I think the Chargers intrigued me, because I thought maybe you could arguably make a case that they maybe made the best strides on defense and – you know, you're adding Khalil Mack t- to Joey Boza. That's formerly Derwin James. Okay. So it's not so much Justin Herbert. To me, it's more can Brandon Staley do what he do, did for the Rams defense a couple years ago, even though they didn't win the Super Bowl. Okay. But he made them the number one defense in the league. Can he make this Chargers defense number one? Because that AFC West is absolutely loaded. By the way, I think Denver gets a winning record, but I'm not convinced Denver's going to be in the playoffs. Mm. It's interesting. Uh, that division could have three playoff teams if you look. Or could have bottom. four. I mean, yeah. it's not out of the realm that yeah. they could have four. We could actually see them. I, I, I think Kansas City this year, losing Tyreek Hill, they're not as good as they were last year. And Not as explosive. No, and I, I think no. that's going to be a big problem. They're going to rely on Patrick Mahomes' arm this year. And, and Patrick, you know, when the pressure comes – Patrick has been in those situations at certain parts of those games, especially against the Buffalo Bills where he didn't look as dominant as he has in, in regular season games. So I, I think when he plays the more quality teams, he, he doesn't play as well. So it's going to be they interesting. Are, I, I'll tell you something, Nero. I, I've gone back and I've done various pieces on it. Steve spagnolo has been there three years. Yep, They got off to a terrible start in 2019. They got hot late in the year and hot in the playoffs defensively. They carried that over to 2020. It fell apart by the end of 2020. The falling apart part, falling apart part, yes, (laughs) carried over into their three and four start a year ago. Then they got hot. And then late in the year in the playoffs, the defense, I mean, it's Coney Island, if you like roller coasters. And they play well in the first half against the uh, the Bengals, and then they they collapse. I love Coney Island. We have seen, how many times have we seen, listen, Andy Reid is going to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I don't think there's any question about it. But Andy Reid has had his share of blown big leads in playoff games. He's blown an 18-point lead or more three times in the postseason, twice at home while he was with the Chiefs. Remember the Marcus Mariota game? Mm-hmm. What about the Colts one? Was it, what about the Colts one, too? Wasn't that at home? Or? The Colts, yes. Yeah, they that was at That was at Indy, okay. All right. Right. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's, 
That's something that, that's definitely well, something he surprised the Browns. You're right about, you're right about Mahomes. Yeah. I thought last year he pressed yep. because of that defense. Mm-hmm. And, you know, turnovers are turn listen, turn this is a league now defensively where you it's hard to find a team that really stops another team. But if they take away the ball, that's about as close. It, it's more takeaway driven. I mean, you, you probably have to go back to Denver in 2015 and Seattle in 2013, where you had a team that actually could stop people and didn't really. Now, the 2013 Seahawks had a pass rush. They had the takeaways and they had the yardage um, as far as stifling. Through. That's one of the all time great defense. I mean, it's not the 2000 Ravens. OK, which is I mean, I, I, I've thrown this out. Chris Berman and I used to talk about this a lot. The Ravens in 2000, think about this. Think about what we see now. They played 20 games, including the playoffs. They gave up 188 points in wow. 20 games. Wow. We're not that far mo- removed from r- rule changes. 188 points in 20 games? Mm. They gave up less than 20 offensive touchdowns in those games. They gave up one offensive touchdown in four playoff games. Wow. When you say all time, I know we 85 Bears, 76 Steelers, 188 points in 20 games, is, is that, that's something to, to behold. That is 9.4 points per game. Are you talking yes. about the 2000 Ravens, right? Yes, who won Super Bowl yeah. 35 when they beat the Giants. <sighs> yes, I remember I that mean, very well. 9.4? 9. 9. I mean, that's, that's a gymnast score. Mm-hmm. I was gonna. I was trying to figure out what that was. I was gonna guess like twelve yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Nine point four. 4. I mean, it's a, I mean, last year, you look at you know you look at teams who gave up the fewest points, and you know pretty much everybody get gave up three hundred or close to three hundred. Mm. Okay, I think mean, Buffalo gave up the most, and that was two eighty nine in seventeen games. Okay, they gave it the fewest, I should say. I mean, we, we see teams now give up 500 points in a season. It's crazy. Well, the Jets yeah. being one of them. <laughs> Last yeah. year. I, I think the Saints yeah. did that once, and it was like unheard of to thought of. Now there's like three teams doing it every year. I, I remember last year the Jets had that lead against the Buccaneers, and I, I for sure thought that that was going to be a win for the Jets. And then all of a sudden – Tom Brady throws to a no-name wide receiver that you never heard of. He's like a fifth. After, yeah, it's like Grace and something. After yeah. Antonio Brown, you know, undresses <laughs> himself and walks off the field with his two thumbs up to the Jet fans. I mean, I, I remember that game very, very well, and somehow the Buccaneers win that game. But I'm not surprised it was the Jets. And, and as a Jet fan and a lot of fellow Jet fans out there probably just wanted to throw up because Tom Brady did it again against them. It's safe to say that some people lost their shirt. <laughs> Some people lost their shirt, lost their pads, and then eventually lost his virginity. <laughs> All right, my last question. Back to the Hall of Fame. Anybody else that you think should be in the Hall of Fame by now, whether it's a senior guy or some of the guys that have just been on the ballot the last maybe five years? You know, I, I regularly do like a, a top 30 list. And I the last one I did was a year and a half ago. And I have to redo the list because five guys actually got in. That uh, five of the th- you know, that has nothing to do with me. Cliff Branch was one. Um, Laborie Butler was one. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony Baselli was one. And I can't think of the fifth one right off the top of my head. That like again, there's uh, Randy Gratishar, Chuck Howley, Clay Matthews. You know, just some Roger Craig, uh, Roman Gabriel. Um, there's so many guys from so many different eras. You know, and again, I'm going to, depending on what Jarrell happens. Revis on that? Is he? He's is one of the new ones this year. Yeah. yeah. He should yeah, be well, a Yeah, he's not. Yeah. Revis isn't. Yeah. I only did this one. Guys oh, gotcha. Quality. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now I know when I redo the list that I know Devin Hester's going to be on there. Yes. Because absolutely, I thought he absolutely. was the first ballot. It, you know, what's very unusual about the Hall of Fame this year. Um, nobody was first ballot. Mm. Yeah. Nobody was first ballot. Okay, Dick Vermeule's a coach, that, so he's been waiting for a while. Art McNally, that's a contributor thing, so that's not necessarily a ballot thing. And Cliff Branch was on the seniors committee. Mm. But the five modern-day guys that went in, none of them were first ballot. I, I was thinking the first ballot guys would have been Devin Hester and DeMarcus Ware. Yeah. So uh, there's a couple guys I would add to the list, and then you know whoever winds up being – uh, you know, as we whittle down and so on. But again, I'm going to be very, very curious to see how the senior committee 
whittles down to three. And again, they're going to do that in a couple of years. So but remember, we had the centennial class a couple of years ago where they, you know, added 15 guys. So again, the league is, I'm not the league, the hall is doing its best mm. to get rid of some, such backlog and so on. Again, you think about it, you know, I often hear people say, well, there's 362 players in the hall of fame. It's not 362 players. That's including the coaches and that's including the contributors and so on. So not the writers. There is no writer's wing in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You get their awards. Uh, the, the Dick McCann Award does not put you, give you a bust in the Hall of Fame. And, and trust me, I know a lot of guys who won the Dick McCann Award. The Pete Rozelle Award for television and radio. That's not, you know, Howard Katz got it this year from the mm-hmm. NFL Network who, you know, I worked with it when I was at ESPN and so on. So um, it's a relatively small group if you think about the fact that the hall has been around what that's the mad 60 years now basically 60 classes yeah i should be in the hall of fame the way they they pick people oh i don't agree with that on that <laughs> I, I, when d i i, I got to tell you when dion said what he said the other day he really caught me off guard uh-huh. i mean if you want a different co- color jacket i mean you know diet <laughs> Maybe Terrell Owens will get the same thing. No, I feel bad for Terrell Owens. I, I do. I as good as crazy as he is, and how big how big of a big mouth he is on and off the field. The guy was a first ballot Hall of Famer. For anybody to say that he wasn't, it was disrespectful for the the committee committee to not vote him in as a first ballot Hall of Fame. They let Randy Moss go in, but not Terrell Owens. Which, by the way, Terrell Owens was a much better player than Randy Moss. As good as Randy Moss was, go look at the numbers. Terrell Owens was a much better player than Randy Moss was. So, and that's well, the argument for the, first off two things. Go back and look. At the modern day wide receivers, Errol, how many are first ballot? Uh, less than ten, probably less than ten. And uh, no, Andre, not probably, definitely. Andre Johnson should be there. Uh, Who? Andre Johnson should be there. Right. Well, we'll see. Yeah. And so, I mean, Marvin Harrison wasn't first ballot. No, that's pretty startling. Mm. Okay, Owens obviously wasn't first ballot. Mm. Guys like. Art Monk and Chris Carter and right. Lynn Swan all waited for years and years. Yeah. If I had a gripe about the Pro Football Hall of Fame, it would be the wide range. They, they, they seem torn between the older players and the newer numbers, mm. okay? Because now we have like 14 guys who have caught 1,000 passes. That was almost unheard of a long time ago. But the other thing about Terrell Owens, and this is just what you hear in the background and stuff, The fact that he was a disruptive force within the organization, nothing to do with off the field. I think about T.O. didn't get in any trouble off the field. Mm. Okay. The fact that he was disruptive, you know, with the, what we saw with the Eagles, what we saw with the Cowboys. I think it's going to be one of those things that down the road, because of what happened, probably more what happened with the Raiders and with the Buccaneers, Antonio Brown has Hall of Fame numbers, Mm. okay? But the fact that he got in a confrontation with Mike Mayock, he decided to do, you know, Magic Mike (laughs) against the Jets. That's the kind, I mean, and walked off the field. That's the stuff. That's the stuff that costs you with the voters and so on. And by the time some of these guys are retired, who knows what the voting committee is going to look like. So might even be bigger. The one thing I will remind people, because I hear a lot about media, 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 Guys like Dan Fouts, Tony Dungy, James Lofton are all Hall of Fame voters. So it's not just media members. I mean, they're in the media now, but it's not just media members. These are guys who are Hall of Fame players or a Hall of Fame coach. Bill Polian is one as well. Well, Russ, we really appreciate your time as always. We'll be in touch. We'll get you on very, very soon. Uh, the last time we had John was, uh, what was it? Last year. It was last year. I want to like get John. Or something like I want to get John as the season progressively starts. Uh, I, I want to see like third or fourth week. I'd like to get you on and your thoughts of some of these teams and, and, and what you think of the AFC and the NFC. But we really appreciate your time. Tell the fans how they can find you on social media. Dax Football Guru on Twitter is probably the best thing you can do because I tweet out everything I write. And whether you like it or not, you're getting it. It's kind of like Liam Neeson. I have a special set of skills. Okay, I will find you and I will 
follow you. <laughs> Taken. I love that movie, by the way. I, I watch, every time it's on TV, I watch Taken 1, Taken 2, Taken 3. I, I love the movies. I'm waiting for Taken 4 to come out, but uh, his wife is gone, so I doubt he's making another one. But again, we really appreciate you joining us, and we'll talk to you soon, Russ. You guys have a great night. Thanks. A lot of fun.